I don't even know what the hell the point of this loft is. This is like, what the heck do I have over here? I am not feeling good today. I thought it was the allergies, but uh, turns out, nope, it got a cold. Anyway, we made a list yesterday of all the stuff we got to complete on this tiny house. And uh, I'm going to focus on box A, which is the master bedroom, living room, deck. And I thought it'd be a great time to go through some layout of how I lay out recessed lights, how I run outlets, especially in a tight loft area. There's like no room up there, it sucks. But uh, I didn't put the floor in up there for that particular reason. So we're gonna go up through the floor joist because if I had to army crawl up there, I think I'd quit my own job. I still might quit, but we'll just see how today goes. And then we'll worry about tomorrow. All right, let's get started. So what we got is we've got a double plate coming up out of our wall and then we have this rafter that has completely hijacked how I'm going to get into the ceiling. Now you can kind of see what I'm talking about. You got this uh, double plate and then this, I can tell by the nail pattern in the side of here that there's like three or at least two nailed together. So I gotta get a wire that's gonna come up through here and come out here, so. It's important on this to get all the, all the wood chips out. And then I'll line it up this way and I'll go in about two inches or so, square it up. And I'll take a piece of wire and I'm gonna go to about where it comes out the hole. I'm gonna put a little bend on it, just a little, just enough to where it'll still go through the hole. Oh yeah. And then I'm just, I'm pushing it and I'm bending it and then it comes through the hole like that. When we're drilling our holes through our joists, we wanna make sure that we keep ourselves about two inches above the, the face here so that we get no nails or screws. <laughs> We also don't want to stand underneath it because that's just stupid. This, this first one, I'm just going to run like right here. And another thing, you might see the yellow Rolmax and go, why is he using 12? And the reason I'm using 12 wire is because I'm out of 14.2 and it's the end of the job. You can always step up the, 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 uh, the, 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 the gauge, but you cannot reduce the gauge. So it's 15 amp circuit. We can use 12 wire all day, all day. When coming into the box, you wanna make sure you put your service loops in there. It's really important. Um, it gets kind of messy in here, but <clears throat> it's worth it. Now on something like this, where I've got a three way that's gonna run back to the other side, I'm typically gonna send that Rolmex with the light roll max through the same uh, opening in the box. And the reason I'm doing that is in case the marker or whatever gets rubbed off of, of the, the wire, or maybe if I'm using a label machine, the label comes off the, the wire. I, I still, it makes it very easy to diagnose what the hell is going on, you know? The last thing you want is to be dorking around for hours on end trying to figure out what's, what the deal is. You can also put tape on these, but everyone's got their own style. So I'll write three-way for uh, deck, lights, LTS. And then this will be deck, lights. I always feed the box first, you know? Then, then I know where to go from there. After you get the first two lights laid out, you're gonna to wanna to do some math and figure out what you feel is proportioned to the rest of the, the layout. And then from there, you just go light to light to light. Now on this, there's only six lights, so I typically wouldn't bust out a laser uh, line for something so simple. Uh, I would just pull my numbers off the actual framing. Once you've laid out all your lights, you gotta figure out how to wire them. So there's six lights in this ceiling, so you're gonna go wire this in parallel, 
Light to light to light to light, 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 done. You see what I mean? I don't even know what the hell the point of this loft is. This is like, what the heck do I have over here? Uh, I'm really crabby today. I just hear it in my voice. Six inches without the plywood. So you put the plywood on there, it's like five and a quarter. And then you put the carpet on top of that. Oh my God, what am I doing with my life? There's supposed to be an outlet in this wall over here. To me, that just seems stupid. Like honestly, over here, it's not that much better. In this corner, it's gonna be like 27. But at least I got some room before the top plate to put a freaking outlet in. And uh, yeah, I had to have the drywallers do this section first because otherwise nothing was gonna get uh, completed. I'm gonna have to have a call with a customer. This seems kind of ridiculous. You know, like, plus what the hell are you plugging in over here? I shouldn't. Man, I'm crabby today, but I'm not doing this like that. That's when you got to speak up with the customer, you know. They put it on the print, you know, they, they don't think about what this is going to look like or how this is going to feel, you know. They don't know what it's going to be like this to plug their freaking cell phone in. You know, army crawling across here. And that's where you got to just, you got to, you got to stand up for yourself and, and be like, hey, look. Here's what I see. What do you want to do? It's really common today to not run coax cable uh, to the TVs anymore. Now everything is getting uh, a data cable and even that's becoming more and more obsolete. Uh, for certain customers that don't like Wi-Fi, they like things hardwired, you know, we're still gonna run a Cat6 cable to their TV. Where we have to terminate them is, is kind of interesting because um, you know, there's two halves to this house. They join together. So I got to open up the floor and uh, show you the junction point. I've talked about this in my other videos and uh, I can't stress it enough to, you got to get a wire spooler. You can quickly switch between wire and uh, even data cable. Yep. This is kind of an argumentative point, but it's just good practice. I personally like to run my low voltage in separate holes from my high voltage. And the reason I like to do that is because just, just by chance, if it, there was some radio frequency interference or some sort of Hertz thing going on, you're gonna eliminate a lot of that risk by making sure that your low voltage is in separate places from your high voltage. It's important that these stay loose. You don't want any stress on this low voltage wire. So that's a good, that's good. Man, I think I got a fever. I'm like sweating my ass off. <clears throat> All right, so I've talked about this plastic in other videos. I put this plastic down before the job starts to get to this access panel. So I, this is a perfect example of, of how nice the job looks. See, chunks of wooden shit. Um, so then I'll just fold that like that. Donezo. Right there. Okay. Oh yeah inside so this is the inside of the trailer in case you missed some of the other videos so there's our wires right there we want to grab those and this junction box right here is you know this opening this is right underneath the washer and dryer so it's a good concealed spot for this type of access panel it's where we're going to run our low voltage it's where our tie-ins come from across the unit into this one and uh, it's really the, 
the heart or the brain of this whole operation is right here on the floor underneath the washer and dryer. And that's where we're gonna bring all of our connections to cross electric from one house to the other, plumbing, all that fancy jazz. I got a lot of stuff to uh, continue to knock out before the end of the day. I'm really not feeling too good, so sorry to cut this short, but uh, as always, it's been fun hanging out and I'll see you tomorrow.